guys, welcome to the 30 Paintings in 30 Days project. If you choose to join me on the 30 Paintings in 30 Days journey, I hope that you do share and tag me in posts like on social media and stuff, maybe film some videos, tag me in the description, something like that. Um, I am um, kind of excited about the project. I do do daily drawing. I don't necessarily do daily painting, but making a daily practice out of something like this encourages you to um, get better at it, um, encourages you to work it into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, it also is a way to use up supplies. So if that's your goal, uh, maybe you don't want to do 30 paintings in 30 days, but you want to do 30 collages in 30 days. That works too. So let me know. Let's get to painting and I'll see you then. Uh, hey guys, we are here for our painting for the 30 and 30 project day 21. This is our little painting study that we're going to do, that we've been doing. On the 31st of July, I might do a flip through of all the paintings, FYI. I have a page open in one of my inspiration books to these three sort of sunset pictures, stormy, cloudy sunset pictures um, that I'm pretty inspired by today. So we're going to work on something in, uh, from them. I'm going to start with this colored pencil I have. This is a colored mechanical pencil. And I'm going to draw a circle right about there. Just because I want to, I want to sort of do something that's sort of inspired by this one in particular, but I, all three of these are interesting. And we happen to have this, oops, sorry. We happen to have this spread here that is all like sky themed. So we're going to just keep going with that. All right, we are gonna get our paints wet. I think for this one, I've got my desert palette and my floral cobalt palette out on the table. My book wants to fall over. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and get them both wet. I'm not actually sure which one I'm gonna use. Probably the desert palette, I'm thinking, because I think it has the colors in it that I want without having to mix anything. And I'm a lazy soul at heart, so. There's that. All right, I'm gonna start, of course, with my um, half inch flat Princeton Neptune brush, my favorite brush. And I'm gonna grab my plate and I'm gonna grab some, let me turn the color card so I can see what the colors are. There we go. I'm gonna grab a little bit of Indian yellow, which is this very orangey yellow I'm going to add a little bit of buff titanium to it, which of course is an off-white. And I'm going to really kind of really water it down. I'm going to take my page here and I'm just going to get the whole page sort of wet with this color. And do sort of a wash. Hang on one second. Okay, got to remember to turn Facebook off so we can get this done. Okay, so I'm going to take the plate that already has this color on it. I'm going to add a little bit more Indian yellow to it. I'm going to add some quidocridone gold to it. Maybe. If I can get some to grab for me on the brush. Okay, and using again the photo as inspiration. The, pa the paper is wet, so you know the color is going to bleed a little bit, which I'm very okay with. The shapes will end up looking more organic, which I want. I should do that part with a small round brush. <laughs> Instead of trying to make it work with a flat brush, I want to outline our little moon shape with this gold color. It may bleed a little bit towards the middle, which is fine, but what I want to do is get a damp brush and sort of encourage it not to go that way and encourage it to go a different way. Something like that. OK, 
okay back to the flat brush adding some water just to sort of soften up a few of the harsh lines okay I'm gonna grab another color to make this a little darker we're gonna try sepia It's a nice dark brown and really, really darken up that orange, make a nice warm brown, sort of medium warm brown. That noise is my husband downstairs. He's making spools for you all for the Etsy shop. He, we sell uh, wooden spools for those of you who are slow stitching out there and working on different spool projects. Okay, if you get too much brown, if you've like gone hog wild, just get your damp brush, lift some of it up. I kind of went a little crazy. It's fine, it'll work out. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the um, Indian yellow straight out of the pan. To add some pops back that I kind of lost. But I actually, yeah, I like what it's doing with the brown. Okay, we're gonna give it a dry and I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna continue making this darker. As with most things, especially watercolor, you always wanna start with your lighter colors and work your way darker. Um, the pa paint, the nature of the paint makes it very difficult to go back the other way. Um, okay, so that lecture being said, we're gonna take some more of our sepia. And again, using our photos for inspiration, looking at where the shadows are in the photo. And trying to sort of recreate the look of the photo. Getting a damp brush again and softening up some of those edges. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of the neutral tint that's in the Desert Palette, the really dark um, black gray color. And make this brownish orange really, really dark and add some of that. without drawing the paint off so it'll stay pretty wet. That looks pretty good, actually. I'm gonna give this a dry, be right back. Okay, we're gonna grab our fan brush. This is a Princeton Select bristle fan number four that I use when I'm watercoloring. It's great to make trees. FYF, that gives you a hint. Um, so we're going to get the end of the fan brush wet with our dark color. And I'm just tapping it on the paper. Tap, tap, tap. I'm going to use the tip of it to like suggest a trunk, tree trunk. You can also just kind of take your fan brush and do this to like for grass. We're going to take more of that neutral tint, the dark color.
had some water, so that was a little dry. Okay, and then we'll take our flat brush. Add a couple pops of this color other places in the painting. Remember, these are just little studies. These are little small paintings meant to um, have you experiment with color and composition, shadow and light, maybe get used to a new material if you're not used to watercolors before or something like that. So these aren't supposed to be, you know, Rembrandts or anything. But I have to say, some of them have turned out really cute. Okay, I'm gonna dry it one more time. Okay, shall we see how it looks? All right. Look at that, that's cute. So there you go. I love that. Um, you know, using such a different colors to come up with a, um, you know, sunset sky image. How cute would this be on a Halloween card? A lot, I mean, hello. All right, so that's it for this week, or I should say today, painting number 21. We'll be back. How was that for today's painting? I hope you enjoyed the process. And um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are gonna get the talking version here on YouTube. You're just gonna get the speed through version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, fa uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And, um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye, guys.